Hey, it's Howard Neller. Welcome to another edition of The Listening Chair. We've got a good one for you today. Today we're going to visit with Edgar Schwari of Theoretica Applied Physics, which is a really neat company that has this technology. It's uh, an oral crosstalk cancellation technology that's used in several components to improve the sound of stereo reproduction, and it's dramatic. Uh, many people say it's the future. It's really, really incredible stuff. We're going to um, visit with uh, the professor. Um, he's going to explain what an oral crosstalk cancellation is and how his technology works. And then we're going to hear a demo. Then we have a really, really super special guest who dropped by, and we're going to speak to him for a while. So if you like what you see, please hit the subscribe button. It really means a lot to us. The more people we can bring in as far as subscribers, the more places we can go, the more people we can visit, um, and we hope you really enjoy it. Without any further ado then, let's roll the tape. Hi, Howard. Thank you for coming to my listening room. Um, I'm an academic researcher. I'm a university professor. My training is in plasma physics, but I've been an audiophile since I was very young. At the age of 14, I convinced my uh, mother to buy me a quadraphonic system back then, Technics, and I had a record. It was uh, Jazz Messengers with Art Blakey. So I played that to death. So I had a I was bit by the bug of spatial audio, the idea that uh, to get realism in audio, it's not only important to get the tonality correct and no distortion and the right, the right uh, pressure level and uh, the right frequency response, but you also have to get uh, a good sense of realism. So it was a kind of an obsession from a very long time ago, and I've been recording as a hobbyist. Uh, and I was always disillusioned by the lack of realism when I play these beautiful recordings done with good equipment on very good playback systems, it's always lacking one thing, the spatial realism. There are some great engineers out there in audio that have improved almost every aspect of audio today, uh, but spatial realism has remained lacking. So I did some research, find out that cross cancellation is a problem that needed to be solved. And so I brought in some tools from my other field to look at this problem. I was able to find a mathematical solution um, for cross cancellation not to have tonal distortion. And this I first we patented, we published, now we teach students at universities this technique. And, and can you yeah. just talk about what crosstalk does? The way humans locate sound is by uh, using what we call spatial cues. The brain ear system relies on spatial cues to locate sound. For example, if somebody make a click right here, my brain knows it's on the right side because that sound takes a little bit longer to get to the left ear than the right ear. A few microseconds longer. And that time, uh, difference, we call it the interoral time difference, uh, inter ear or interoral time difference. Um, you, the brain uses to say the, to guess that the sound is coming from the right side. Uh, same way, if the sound is a little bit on the right side, it will be louder on the right ear, a little louder than the, le than the left ear, especially at higher frequencies, because your, your head is shadowing that sound from getting to the left ear. And that is called the interoral level difference. So this information is very essential to locate sound in 3D. There are other information, one of them is called the spectral cues, is how your ear, the outer ear, colors the sound as it enters your ear canal. And that coloration is used by the brain to locate sound. Uh, and these, these are very well known facts in spatial, in acoustics, in, in uh, human perception of sound. Just in a very layman's kind of terms, one of the, one of the main issues of crosstalk is that you're getting sounds from the right speaker uh, that are going to the ear that not supposed to go into, right? Yeah, I was going to get that. And the left ear yeah. also. I was going to get that. So in okay. order to get that spatial audio, uh, the cues correctly, you want to make sure that that difference in time and level between the two ears is correctly given. So if you record that with two microphones, which you can do easily, either by putting the microphones in the ear, that's called a binaural recording, or by putting them regularly in, in space, you capture part of, depending on what microphones you use. If you use spaced omnis, you, you capture the ITD. If you use um, other techniques, you capture the ILD, the interval level difference. Whatever you capture, you need to deliver that to the ears. If you use regular speakers, you're going to have a problem right away. Why? Because your right ear is going to hear the left and right speaker. Therefore, that, that difference is wrong. So you actually, your ear will, if you put sound in the left channel, right. which should really appear at your left ear in real life, because if somebody puts sound only in your left ear, you'll hear it right here. Uh, but it appears at the speaker because your brain locates the speakers using this, uh, the ILD, ITD of the speaker. Okay. Not the ILD, ITD of the sound recorded, uh, that, you know, uh, the, so the recorded sound. If, you, if you're not convinced, you can do the following experiment. You can go home, uh, make sure your partner is outside the house, 
Uh, is, this the is this the mattress? Thing? Mattress. Take okay. the mattress off the bed <laughs> and put it right between the speakers, like this, uh, so vertical, and come right to your head. It's called the barrier crosstalk cancellation. And play anything stereo, anything that has, doesn't have to be binaural, anything that has a good uh, stereo image. And you'd be surprised what you're going to hear. You're never going to hear your system guarantee you um, image better, as long as you're listening to your speakers, not through the reflections in your room. So just put a mattress, put your head at it, make sure your left ear is mostly hearing the left speaker and the right ear the right speaker. There's a reason why headphones don't work um, because headphones do not do not have any crosstalk, but there's another discussion. I can tell you why, by themselves, headphones need a bit more processing to get you ex to externalize the image. But speakers, it's easy to do crosstalk cancellation to get the 3D image as long as you... I mean, it's easy to get the 3D image as long as you do crosstalk cancellation. Now, how to do crosstalk cancellation has been a challenge. Of course, a mattress is out of the question if you want <laughs> to sit and have, you know, a sitting room in real life. How, how to do it? So one way to do it is to... Um, uh, manipulate the sound so we can delay it in such a way that it gets the right channel gets cancelled in the left ear and people have done that in the 60s, 70s and 80s using analog technique. Luckily today with very powerful um, computers we can do far better than that. That requires that we actually do a measurement of your head acoustically so we can design a crosstalk cancellation filter that cancels uh, sound optimally at all frequencies for your head, for your speakers, take into account all the the particularity of your speaker, your cable, your amplifier, everything, your room, reflections if needed, and also your ear and the shape of your head. The system comes with microphones, a camera, and a box, and an iPad. Okay. Um, you turn it on, and, you, and this system can go, can be its own um, uh, streamer, but it also can, you can put a CD player, a turntable, it has an ATD converter. It, it goes in the chain before your amplification system. Okay. It has a preamp, so you can even skip your preamp. But if you have a preamp, you, you plug it in. Uh, we have a unit that uh, comes with a DAC. We have one without a DAC or a preamp. And that's purely digital, so it goes before your DAC. Okay. So really, it can, we have uh, three different models. They go in any possible co configuration. We haven't had a single system in which you cannot configure the back SP. Okay. okay. Um, what, what speakers are you using? These speakers are made by uh, Roger Sanders. They're called the Sanders M11. He doesn't make these, uh, these versions anymore. He okay. makes the M10, which are bigger. There are wonderful electrostatics uh, hybrid speakers, but you can use any speakers. Okay. So how is it operated? Um, this comes with a, a, um, an iPad app, which controls every aspect of the device. So you can, um, you can choose the input, analog input, for example, now the internal player right here, and you can choose different outputs. Yeah, there's a camera first, actually. The camera is very important because it tracks your head. So if I go to a tracking right here, uh, you can see as I move my head right and left, the, uh, the crosshair are following me down to one millimeter ac uh, uh, sub millimeter accuracy. We know what the, we need to know where the hair, uh, the head is, specifically where the ears are. So this camera tracks my, the head, and at any point, um, the system knows exactly where my head is. And by knowing what my head is, um, it ensures that the crosstalk cancellation is optimal at that location. That's essential. This is a single sweet spot system. Only the person sitting being tracked is going to get 3D. However, the person behind that person can get 3D, but they will, they will have to move with him if, if, if the person is moving. You designed all this, right? The, the software, the hardware, everything. Yeah, right? this is my baby. I wrote every line of software there. I designed the, the hardware. Yeah, the first prototype was built by my technician, Bob Sorensen, who is a wonderful person who's retired now. And then since then, we've um, uh, evolved the hardware and software quite a bit. And now we okay. have new model, but I still write all the software. And mm -hmm. I also, I design uh, the interface. Um, this part of the interface I'm proud about because it looks like a submarine torpedo launcher. <laughs> and what you do, you put the microphones in your ears, and you turn the camera on, you click on arm, right. uh, and you click on fire. And if you're on submarine, you'll get torpedoes going on. But in here, instead, you'll get um, the sound. This is a, um, an exponential sound sweep that goes from 20 hertz to above 20 kilohertz. That sound is recorded right here at, at the in interest of your ear canal by putting these microphones in your ear. And that measurement contains all the information about your system, your speakers, reflections, your head, particular head, your, the shape of your pinna. Everybody, everybody has like a fingerprint, different pinna shape. These yeah. are very important for sound localization. Your brain uses 
the shape of your pinna to color the sound so your brain can recognize the direction better. So all that information is used to design a filter. It's done within a second or two from the time you finish the measurement. And that filter is then loaded in the bin. We had a friend called Ted a few minutes ago sitting here. We made a filter for him in bin number three. And um, So that filter is different for every person, correct? It's every person is different because especially at higher frequencies. Uh, however, if the speakers are plus or minus 30 degrees uh, or 40 degrees, not more, and if they're not too high or too low, that filter is almost universal. You can listen to it. Anybody else will listen will still get 3D. Okay. You will not get as good 3D as Ted would because it was made for him. But the differences are slight. If, uh, but if you change your speaker's location, the filter will be completely up. You have to redo the filter. So it's strongly dependent on the speaker location and the type of speaker. And everybody's measurement is slightly different. The, the system also will display the impulse response so you can see the direct sound. And if there are any reflections in the room, also the system, the iPad will show you what that is. Anything you play is going to go through this back filter. The back filter at 64 bit, very accurately, it does processing without affecting the sound uh, frequency response at all. It's, it's actually completely rule of flat, no coloration whatsoever. And that's what the pattern that we have. Um, my contrary, it's very important to, to, to say this, and I hope it stays on the video. A lot of people say, I invented cross star cancellation. No, incorrect. I did not invent cross star cancellation. It was invented in 1964 by Atal Schroeder, a wonderful scientist back then. Bell Labs. At Bell Labs, that's right. And it's been improved by a number of people, except it had a major flaw that two flaws, one of them is, has a big problem with coloration. It did tonal distortion, especially in the center image. So my contribution, if you can call it a contribution, was solving that problem mathematically, which then we implemented digitally, and that's patented, and that's now in textbooks. That's my contribution. I did not invent the technique. Second, the, only, the other contribution we did is, less, uh, is more, less fundamental but very practical, is to do head tracking and to be able to update the filter in real time without any artifice because Costa cancellation before this requires that you sit in a very sit, uh, a very tight sweet spot. Um, people call it head in a vice. And that's why one of the reasons it didn't go very far. But with head tracking, you can relax and move your head. The image stays 3D. You know, Carver did a wonderful job 30 years ago doing an early version of Costa cancellation. We had doing Costa cancellation in such a way that uh, we send impulses left and right speak from the live speaker, the filter does, in such a way to cancel the sound very effectively, up to 20 decibel, as opposed to Carver can do it all to four or five decibel. And that makes the 3D image very realistic, plus getting you reverb and envelopment in this way where you can really believe you're in, in an actual space, not just uh, widening an image, with, which is what the Carver does. Mm -hmm. But of course, today we can do far better because of, uh, number one, the computer technology, the head tracking technology, and the fundamental, you know, uh, f solutions that we found to the, the coloration problem. Are we going to get to hear it? Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, so basically, I'm going to choose my filter right here, sit in this free spot, and I'm going to play this wonderful singer. Her name is Amber Rubarth. And Amber um, is singing here with two musicians. Uh, someone sitting right there plucking the cello, someone singing all the way here plucking a fiddle. Okay. And she appears right there, and you can hear the reverb. Okay. And the musician should appear right there, right here. Here. Okay, so let's see Amber Rubarth, A Kiss to Build a Dream On. Give me a kiss to build a dream on, and my imagination will thrive upon that kiss. Give me what you long can give. So um, I just wanted to mention, Edgar, that I was one of the first people to review the Bach SP system. Indeed, so, right? indeed, you're the first person to uh, to review the Bach SP. I was curious enough to said, I really bring it to my place. Plugged it and left, and a few weeks later, we shot a wonderful review, and I uh, really appreciate it. It was uh, very insightful. We learned a lot from it. Great. So thanks, well, thanks. thanks. Well, we'll put the link to that in the, in the uh, description Great. for the yes. video. It's not the type of thing where easily you can just record it uh, with a camera and people experience what's going on. You really have to audition it and hear it in person because I uh, read my review, but I will attest to the fact that the, the performers appear you know, in three dimensions where they're supposed to be on the sound stage. If there's a piano in the middle of the room or on the edge of the room, that's where the piano comes from. Um, it, it's the sound, the sound stage is just, I would say, unparalleled in anything that I've heard. Thanks, and, yeah. And it's always fun to hear people describing it, which was the goal, is to really enhance realism, to get you to feel that you are um, in the recording venue or the performance venue 
to connect with the sound in a real way, ideally. That's, that's the goal. Okay? So this is a, I hope people consider this step forward. So if people are interested in learning more about the Bach SP system, what should they do? Well, there's a, a theoretica.us is the website. There's a, quite a bit of information right there. Okay. There's a Q&A um, or FAQ uh, section. People frequently ask questions and answers uh, on the website there. And the staff is wonderful. We pride ourselves for responding. I quite often get involved in tech support. Um, I know many of our customers personally. Uh, we respond to emails very quickly. We, 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 uh, we uh, take pride in that. So if you have questions beyond what's on the website, please do not hesitate to contact, at, uh, contact us at info.theoretica.us. Uh, everyone should really hear the system. It's really eye-opening. And uh, we you. thank you. Thank you, Edgar. Thanks, Howard. Wonderful yeah. to be here.